and welcome everyone for this uh, panel discussion semiconductor is this india's y2k moment so let me invite gs madhusudan he is the co-founder and ceo of incore semiconductor welcome madhu hi and good our, morning good morning. good morning and our next participant is ruchir dikshit india country manager siemens eda thank you so much utkarsh hi madhu welcome yeah. ruchir and our third panelist is ajay sharma senior director strategy and business uh, development intel india hi, welcome hi, everyone. Yeah. Hi, okay. hello everyone so <clears throat> we are all hearing a lot of news about chip shortages and ballooning electronics import bills and government of india has taken a lot of measure to put india on the world map of electronics but the fundamental to realize this y2k moment is if we can put a lot of focus on product engineering in electronics at a scale so madhu what we should do to change the mindset to undertake this activity there has been a lot of talk of manufacturing semiconductors but if you look at the natural progression a lot of design has been happening in india Uh, what we are missing is the manufacturing ecosystem we have electronics manufacturing but we don't have testing and packaging for chips we don't have foundries and we also don't have product engineering so the first focus should be while uh, foundries can happen on the side we should start getting designed in india products they can be manufactured outside it's not a problem uh, that will require a fair amount of investment in product engineering because to figure out what products succeed in the market uh, working on branding marketing strategies all of that matter right so there should be a thrust on how do you design products in india as opposed to just giving talent for designing products for companies outside correct okay now there are some companies like hcl uh, probably uh, others uh, which has started a midway approach where uh, hcl i think calls it a mode 3 where you as a customer go to hcl just give a block diagram they will design the product completely get it manufactured and ship, coordinate with the foundry to ship it in volumes so mm-hmm. you you are not defining the product but the complete product engineering manufacturing mm-hmm. logistics uh, is done by an indian company mm-hmm. uh, that ideally should be the first step then you can have a few startups uh, based on ip from companies like us that can do end user products there also i think the product should focus on chips costing less than 2500 6000 rupees so uh, all the high volume stuff point of sale terminal security terminals there's a huge demand for that so you mean to say that we are uh, it's just like the requirements and the design is there and then yeah. we are executing it the way we used to do you know couple of decades back in the software terms when the software industry started it was more or less from the that uh, you know uh, period so is that exactly. what you are drawing yeah. the similarity yeah because defining a product uh, is not for the faint of heart uh, we are defining one currently uh, for a customer just mm-hmm. to figure out what the analog to digital converter mix needs to be is a two month discussion ah, okay. because you have to do a product matrix you have to talk to end users <coughs> because it, every feature is a compromise right it, which target it. segment you want that skill is completely absent if you want to hire a vp of uh, uh, marketing for a semiconductor company in india you'd be very hard pressed to find one okay because the entire indian ecosystem is full of engineering folks very few people here have conceived the product and taken it to success all those so folks let me, uh, let me find it out from ruchir ruchir what is your take on this one product engineering of electronics at a scale in india i i think what madhu is talking about is bang on target see i mean when we look at product engineering right it is about design and creation of products products that solve consumer problems and design of those products that exceed expectations so for somebody to get involved into that they need to have a very keen eye on what the market needs and that's what madhu is talking about right looking at the market what the market needs looking at the trends and looking at identifying problems that are worth solving and somebody is willing to pay for it what we have done exceedingly well in the past is design products that have been defined by somebody else somewhere else Mm-hmm. now you talked of mindset right the question that you said was okay mindset changes so the first mindset is that i think we can change and we must change is expanding our horizon to start looking at problems rather than answering questions somebody mm-hmm. tells us hey go implement this we go implement that uh, 
but looking at it at a higher level and see what is the core problem that needs to be solved the second uh, we have all these mncs and then uh, lots of design houses in india people are defining products inside of those companies so one mindset change that will affect and every individual is say hey if i can do it for this larger organization i can do it for myself i can do it for an indian company mm -hmm. the third which is the design aspect which is where i believe we can lead because of our unique dna mm -hmm. when we start designing let's start thinking of industrial design let's start thinking of design for repair design for reuse design for repurpose and design for refurbish because it not only helps us uh, do something different than what the rest of the world is doing where it's a use and throw kind of a design mentality and also help the world in the long run okay so you mean to say that let's focus on the problem definition more rather than just providing the answers to the questions or the solution absolutely look at the problem and uh, try to understand what the problem is rather than just answer the question so you also interestingly mentioned that we have mnc r d centers for decades they have designed world-class chips Yes. So I think what we should do or how we should do to leverage this knowledge and expertise to build made in India chip alone or in partnership. Is it back to me? Uh, Ajay. Ajay. Okay. 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 Thanks. Yeah. I mean, I think, see, so this is uh, uh, when you look at uh, India based MNC centers, this is a very strong foundation that I would say we have like, you know, India uh, as an ecosystem gets a lot of these trained resources, proven, tail, proven talent people who know uh, how to do things. However, I would say that, you know, there are a few critical pieces um, that are actually today missing. The first one is just the mindset to really own the product. When you are working in these companies, the product has been defined and, you know, people are just executing to that. But how do you um, start to have the mindset to own the product, which means take a risk that, you know, I'm going to make a product. I'm going to do the hard yards in finding the customers who will use it. Uh, and that's kind of, you know, I would say, big tall order but it is still the start how do you sustain the product how do you support the product how do you modify it incrementally over one two three generations before it really becomes the product that it has to become mm -hmm. i think that's a very very critical leap the second i would say uh, you know the big big thing that really needs to change is around um, you know how um, the funding models the investor appetite the entrepreneur appetite has to change I mean, I was just reading about it, like, you know, Cruise is a company that is trying to do autonomous driving. They have been at it for 12 years, no revenue, but, you know, they are motivated, they're passionate, they're working on it. So the, the people who are putting money in projects like this have to have that mindset. Entrepreneurs have to have that vision that, okay, I will do something for a long duration. When we look at semiconductor, you know, these are not, uh, these are not six month, 12 month, 18 month kind of project, right? You really need to have three, four, five year kind of a, appetite before you you know that you know this will look like uh, something that is uh, gaining traction and is likely to be successful and i think so, third one madhu touched upon in the beginning around uh, uh, you know defining a product i would say similarly semiconductors just by definition the scale that they need requires you to think bigger than just one country or one small subset of problem that you are looking at so having that vision having that uh, mindset to really define something that has that scale would be important i would say these three so, things so basically should be what uh, we can make it out is the ownership once you will have an ownership of the product then you will have a risk appetite then you will be able to reach out for the you know uh, to the right investors or you can excite those entrepreneurs so this is still missing in our indian ecosystem richard uh yes to a certain extent yes you know and then going back to the mncs right uh, let's give where credit is due. MNCs, like uh, Ajay said, have created a very strong foundation for us. And what it has, what they have done is they have created this rich training ground for base skills and knowledge. And if you look at the Indian companies that are in the semiconductors today, a large percentage of the leadership has come out of those MNCs. Mm -hmm. So we know that this model is working. People get trained, people get trained in a certain way of thinking, in a certain way of uh, trying to solve problems. Mm -hmm. So what's the next step? The next step is the ecosystem that Ajay ref uh, referred to, is somebody needs to go take an ownership. When they want to take an ownership, there has to be a risk appetite. I believe the risk appetite is existing today because I am personally pretty active in the startup scene in India. 
and I see that there are lots of young people who are uh, budding with ideas, but the areas where they start to struggle a little bit is that in the semiconductor and electronics, the level of glamour is less compared to some of the software fields, okay. which means that they have to take those five extra steps that some other entrepreneur with an innovating innovative idea, which is on the software side, uh, might get attraction. So what I've been trying to work and talking to people is let's create an ecosystem that promotes electronic startups. Mm -hmm. So what does that ecosystem need? It needs funding sources and funding sources who have the patience. Like Ajay said, it's not something that somebody can spin up in six months and go out to the market and make revenue. So investors mm -hmm. need education. There has to be some incentives from the government which are coming in now. Mm -hmm. So securing those funding sources. Second, which we have a lot of, but we have not harnessed, is mentors and advisors for these people who have ideas. So hopefully the next step is to build this ecosystem where people feel uh, brave enough to take the plunge because they know that they have help, not just in funding, but also on how to take the product to the market and be successful over a long run. So, uh, Ruchir, uh, Shiva, in one of the chat messages, said, which we have you have briefly touched about it, that most of the students in the IT or in any other colleges, they all prefer CS and they will hardly go for ECE and Triple E. Or if they get that one, then they will also move from the job perspective towards more of this one. So, yes. when we talk about investors and entrepreneurs and the whole ecosystem, how you know this semiconductor industry is reaching out and glamorizing that into the colleges or what are your one line suggestion how we should do it and then i will go to ajay and madhu on that question so, so for, for first is, a, is an admission that as an industry we have done a very poor job in explaining to our students how good we are and how <laughs> how <laughs> Uh, and how rewarding this career can be because if you took if you just take a look at the starting salaries for people who come into electronics and ic design on average they are three to four x more than an average starting salary in the software field and we have done a very poor job so i think that's one of the things that we need to do as an industry is to say that the value that we create for the world is rewarding and the gratification might not be instant but when it comes it's huge Okay. So creating a right messaging around it, and it's not going to be a one-time thing. It's a sustained effort, but we start now. So, Madhu, what do you see that are we able to excite uh, you know students in the colleges uh, to take up electronics for better future? We are. See, you should realize one thing: with software, uh, you can get a lot of lateral entries and stuff, uh -huh. and you you can get away with a quasi-engineering approach. Designing chips and electronics requires uh, intellectual focus. integrity, focus, a mm. lot of things, which most students don't have. So mm. it's comparing apples to oranges. You really need the cream of engineering talent to come into this. Mm. Software may tell that you can you can manage with a lot of stuff because somebody else will fix the part. You do a seven nanometer tape out and <laughs> Engineering discipline required uh, yeah. is significantly more in uh, IC design. Uh, so fundamentally, because our engineering colleges don't turn out engineers, that is where you're mm -hmm. facing the problem. You need to fix oh. it there. Yep. Yep. So let me ask. Maybe, but, uh, maybe just just so just one comment I quickly wanted to make was that you know at least yeah. in the context of the, this topic. I think the last 18, 24 months has seen a significant shift in kind of, you know, hardware becoming sexy again, because, you know, the amount of funding, the amount of startups that you are seeing that are actually doing, I mean, it's a global phenomena. It will probably reach India as well. But, you know, because of the fabulous model, because of this open hardware, a lot of these things, it is starting to become a lot more attractive for hardware. So, I mean, I have hope that, you know, it will it'll create the pull. That, good, so that is also adding up to our Y2K moment. That's very good. Okay. So let me see if you see a pie of any electronics product, uh, you know, development or inside any electronics product. Fab is just one pie, which is expensive. So let's set aside Fab because the whole press is flooded with Fab. What are the three things, Madhu, which we should focus on? to grow our dominance in the rest of the parties? Uh, SOC design, uh, mm -hmm. availability of local IP, 
-hmm. and testing and packaging. Okay. So, and uh, Ajay, you want to add something or something different? Yeah. I mean, I, I would say that, you know, um, just the product design side of things beyond the SOC, like, you know, at a system level, how do you build a product? Even that actually is a very large area. Uh, you know, if you look at uh, products sell for a thousand dollars and the bombs are hardly 300, 400. So just have building products that are conceptualized and then using the ingredients, I think is an important area we should, we should look at. And then I think just in the context of India, just uh, I think we are doing pretty well on that. Uh, but just thinking about uh, associated uh, services and applications, how do you monetize them? But kind of you know stitch it to the hardware side of the things. I think that that can become a good uh, incremental like you know pie for us. Mm -hmm. yep. So Richie, adding to all those ones, the intellectual property is also yep. one of the important one, which will be going to give a lot more revenues for future. Yes. So how is uh, you know keeping this for the dominance in the other pie and also keeping the intellectual property on it what India should do in this decade to you know to realize our dream So I think that the problem of IP is well understood if the IP is conceptualized by a team in India they own the rights of the IP and and you know combining what Ajay and Madhu said I see fab let's keep that aside like you started off with but then if we look at the components that add value to a product and when we think of a product i think the next step that we should take in our evolution is think of system not just think of an ic not just think of uh, you know an ip but think of the system because eventually what gives the experience to the consumer is the system mm -hmm. so but like i just said right think of the product design and think of the product design at a system level what will hit the consumer because that's where the biggest value add is. Packaging and testing, I completely agree with Madhu that those are the areas that we can have a strategic advantage. Um, so for me, IP is uh, something that we all understand and is, is given. Uh, as Indian companies, like, you know, Madhu is running his own company, the IP that he and his team creates, they own it. And if they have done a good job in creating the product, assessing market demand, they will derive and drive value out of it. Okay. So, so having that uh, higher level thought of the system and thinking of the consumer, I think is the key. Okay. So you talked about packaging. Uh, so India is ramping up uh, Madhu on uh, semiconductor packaging, assembling and testing. So can in this decade, India will become the world center of all the global products where we will be doing packaging, assembling and testing. Is does I'm India have the potential and the right momentum? to achieve that in this game. I'm actually talking to the Tata guys next week. Actually, 18 to 24 months, if you play our cards right, uh, we can easily grab anywhere from 5 to 20, 25% of the market. A lot of it is being done in Thailand and Malaysia and stuff like that. It's not as if there is a whole bunch of uh, great uh, engineering thinking that went into it, right? So a lot of companies started putting packaging companies there because of incentives. The, the simplest thing in packaging is uh, customs clearance. So typically in a packaging unit in Thailand or Malaysia, the uh, wafer uh, comes in uh, around afternoon or something. Mm -hmm. uh, clears customs and all that gets delivered to the uh, plant by 6 o'clock in the evening. Uh, they kind of work uh, overnight cleaning it up, uh, dicing it, packaging it, testing it. And by the next day, I think 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, it's on the way back to the airport. It's about 24 hours turnaround. Oh. So if you want to do packaging for uh, companies abroad, you need to guarantee 24 hour turnaround. If you do that, a whole bunch of companies will start shifting within three months. Hmm. A lot of people want to come in. The only question they ask is just clear up customs for me. So you mentioned that the recent news item of, from the Tatas of 300 yeah. uh, million uh, investment yeah. in various yeah. cities for the semiconductor. Yeah. So you think that in 18 to 24 months, 5 to 20 percent of the market share we can capture? No, no. If we want, I mean, but it has to be done on more footing, right? Okay. So Raja Manikam, who is uh, uh, hired by the Tatas, who used who created Asol, Asol has been doing uh, essentially outsourcing for testing and packaging engineers because they didn't want to do it themselves. They went for a mm -hmm. service type model. The expertise is there. But granted, a lot of the downstream components like uh, BGA reballing, uh, mm -hmm. substrate manufacturers, a lot of PCB stuff, all of that is still in Taiwan and stuff. It'll take time mm -hmm. for that to come. Uh, I would suggest that we focus on the top of the packaging and then these component vendors will slowly start uh, coming in. See, in spite of manufacturing PCBs for what, 20, 30 years now, 
we still don't have state of the art uh, pcb manufacturers in india uh, yet so if i need to do bga bga has got a substrate which is a pcb that's a huge cost right hmm. on on a 10 dollar chip i just did costing last week 2 dollars is way for 3 and 1/2 dollars is packaging the rest is ip and design cost right so for chips costing below 20 dollars the packaging cost actually dominates over the wafer cost okay so acha in order to realize this y took a moment for india in this whole decade is there any low hanging fruit you know in uh, you know from, from the software packaging assembling or testing or from the from the pie perspective what goes in making an electronic product which india should prioritize in the next few years i mean i think i think ip is one good area that we should uh, focus on because that that is something that you know a uh, lot of the expertise and talent that exists in the country we can leverage that and that gives you a foothold into that it's lot more uh, easier to kind of you know start positioning that for for global customers as well um, i would say that's kind of you know one area we should look at uh, i still think that you know we are a very large consumer market building Uh, and we are also so let me put it this way we are a very large consumer market but we are also building a lot of infrastructure the digital infrastructure that is needed for the needs so maybe having a mindset to actually build products for that you know if assembly test manufacturing like uh, um, madhu mentioned if that comes through can we take that build the boards build the systems that are designed by us not just designed for somebody else i think that would be that that's actually a very very big area that we can really capture uh the demand is our own demand we can influence the policy to do that um skills pretty much exist in the country i think we just need kind of you know mindset that you know we will make our own product towards that i would say that that would be a second very big area for us and then we, we have to keep an eye on the long term right you know uh building a fab is not just about building that that silicon or the wafer but you know it brings a lot of other goodness into the ecosystem like just the materials research like just the um ability to kind of you know have that strategic independence so maybe that could be a moonshot for let's say 10 years 12 years but it should be kind of you know supported by a lot of these intermediate steps that we just talked about to reach there so you know keep that goal I in mind but work to, on these things yeah i will come to fab little later but ruchi you have to add something on this part of what um, is the low hanging fruit which we should just get it in next two years to see some tangible result towards that y took a moment so i think this whole space is a three dimensional space right one is the des- product design side that we've talked about second is on the ip and third is manufacturing and in each of those uh, directions in each of those vectors there are some low hanging fruit mm-hmm. madhu has very eloquently talked about packaging and testing and the value add that packaging and testing provides in the entire supply chain in the ecosystem uh, but we have to be quick we have to be fast and you know one challenge that you know madhu talked about when in, in thailand for example something can be turned around in 24 hours we have some other policy issues that we need to deal with you know, for example if a piece of wafer comes in to india is it and it's going to get packaged and re-exported how do we deal this with this in the import export mm. so that you know the way our setup is done that needs to fundamentally change but it's possible and but we have to be quick because i was just reading a news item what we are thinking we are not the only ones brazil is also thinking the same way brazil when they lost their semiconductor houses because of their economic conditions now brazil is talking about putting up packaging and testing facilities in brazil so we are not the only ones who are going on this path second i believe product design is going to be the key where we can have a meaningful impact will it happen in 2 years i doubt i would be very happy jumping up and down if it does ip is somewhere where i think we have a lead compared to uh, all the other things because like uh, ajay said we have the talent and this this talent has created ips but for somebody else let's not now just go and create the ip for ourselves so uh, as far as the fab is concerned the favorite topic for you know in the current uh, news item so in my previous company in fenera it was a vertically integrated so i had an opportunity to visit our own fab in uh, california and it was as if the full heavy you know the uh, jacket with everything just as if i was walking on the moon not a single strand of hair was visible because if somewhere it falls it will change the property of the material so i could really envisage how much investment and how much you know carefulness goes in the fab one 
so madhu i have read your comment in economic times a couple of weeks back where you have some suggestions about uh, what type of fab we should focus what type of fab we should not and uh, how much we should glamorize and how much we should not so madhu <laughs> what is your take on that from india perspective the simplest thing you want to do you lease 4000 square kilometers to taiwan and you egg the chinese on saying you got no guts to invade taiwan tsmc will shut up what is the next what is the next see most of the world still is at 350 all those micrometers still uh, 40 nanometers right we can become the world leaders in those very very quickly uh, actually a lot of used fabs used to come up for sale 10 years ago i was trying to convince the government i mean they were coming up for 300 400 million dollars yes it's like a flea market sale anytime something comes buy it uh, right but now unfortunately uh, it, it, it costs a lot more you can have one leading edge fab may take time but the, the problem is everybody and his mother is incentivizing people like intel and tsmc to come to their country right if the us is forced to offer incentives to intel and tsmc what hope do we have uh, correct the kind of money that uh, arizona can throw at uh, intel we can't throw but mm. if you take a look at all the uh, other uh, fabs uh, tsmc itself don't want to keep producing such a nanometer 90 nanometer they're actually having second sourcing and all of that now mm. that opportunity is being lost we can actually tie up with all the major fab guys and saying that hey shift all your uh, older node production over here mm. your led controllers all this small stuff a whole bunch of semiconductors still happens in the uh, uh, lower node fabs right so basically ajay what madhu is saying that uh, low end semiconductor okay which is also you know we need it for almost every equipment and every board so that is what we should focus first build all these expertise and then we should focus later on for the high end semiconductor what is your take yeah yeah i, yeah, I mean i think see it it makes sense to uh, start with the mature nodes rather than kind of you know with the leading edge or the bleeding edge nodes just uh, from the from the learning curve perspective investment perspective that starts to make more sense uh, i also think that you know when you when you look at a fab and you 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 think about the customers that will come in there all of them look for a road map what will you give me next so you know it has to be a part of our inherent planning process that you know mm-hmm. we work with somebody who has who has some of those next node or the node after that as well i think there is another way to look at this which i think is important uh, in the context of india that you know there are there are certain specialty processes whether it's around gan whether it's around some kind of you know rf uh ev is happening in a big way that needs a very different kind of a process maybe uh, you know it might be also worth really exploring that you know uh, those are probably better nodes to start so instead of just a plain vanilla 14 nanometer or a 28 nanometer maybe pick a specialty uh, because then you are you know operating in a niche where if you if you really perform well you have a, a higher probability of success so that okay. has to be looked at it and i think madhu touched upon it this is whichever way you look at it right you can go to any company not just uh, you mentioned intel but any company that you go to almost every central bank is offering them uh, incentives that are significantly high because it's just so capital intensive you know you everybody is going to offer that so for india we will have to make sure that you know we we bring the best of i mean we'll have to put the money but there are so many other good things that india has to offer law and order you know talent people large market we have to create a package which combines all these things and makes makes it worthwhile for anybody to invest here and we can do that i think that's what we have to look at okay so i'm going to take a, you know a question a little bit elaborated from what dharmaraj has asked so see if you see the top 10 15 uh, companies semiconductor companies uh, in the world and most of them are dominated by us from the design research and ip perspective and south korea and uh, taiwan from the manufacturing uh, perspective so i want a very specific answer by 2030 madhu can any indian company be in top 20 or top 30 or top 40 in the world no no in what category as a you know whatever be category either it is from the manufacturing side or it is from the research design side or ip side or you know packaging side whatever be the category can india be in that top 20 or 30 or 40 of the semiconductor giants if, if you 
if you take the bottom uh, uh, the lower end things like uh, i would be, i would even say chips costing up to 20 dollars right your typical uh, nxp uh, single core dual core embedded microcontrollers basically the embedded market uh, if we play our cards right in about 10 years uh, we can easily be in the top 5 oh very good okay. displacing so somebody uh, displacing somebody like uh, nxp or st uh, hmm. is not that uh, difficult uh, okay. right because they are commodity products, you don't have to innovate on features too much. Mm -hmm. See, the simplest thing is you do a Me Too product, which is pin compatible, okay. right? And price it 10% cheaper, give much better support, give better, more FAE yeah. support, documentation, all of that, right? You you make the process of building a product easier with your pin compatible product. That's how you start. So, so Ruchin, what is your take? Top 20, 30, 40? Uh, again, and I'll start with what Madhu, the question that Madhu asked, what category, but I won't ask you that question. I will say that in uh, packaging and testing, we do have everything that can enable us to become in the top, get in the top 10 mm -hmm. for packaging and testing. Uh, the other area where I believe that we should think about instead of just thinking top 10 or 20 is what will get us there? What will make that one company get into the top 10? For one company to get in top 10, they have to be 100 companies who are playing in that market. Mm -hmm. So my hope is that in the next decade, we have 100 startups which are in semiconductors and electronics in India by the end of this decade. And these startups that are economically viable, once we have that, then we have a chance of get, making one of them a unicorn or getting recognized as a top 10 or top 20 supplier in the world. So my hope is that in the next eight or nine years that we have, we build an ecosystem that we have 100 startups who are playing in that market and participating in it. So Ajay, Ruchir has given a roundabout answer. He wants 100 shoulders so that one company can rise on top of 100 shoulders. What is your take on <laughs> Matu and Ruchir's answer? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> I mean this, this is a, there, there is a question that I wish that, you know, yes, we, we want to be in the top five. I, I wish that we are in top five, top 10, but I think the, the reality is going to be, if you look at it from a revenue and other perspective, getting there is going to still take time considering we have zero today right we don't even have somebody who's kind of you know even in the in the figure but the way i look at this is if we can start to uh, generate some some unicorn start to have some of these products showing up in the next five years and then kind of you know we will be in a much better position to start scaling that's how we should look at it so if we can get maybe you know three or four really well designed chips from which are totally conceptualized and owned by Indian companies, but they start to show up in, let's say, global products. That's a win for us. Let's let's aim to do that. Okay. Then we should start looking at, okay, which are the 10, 15, 20 IPs? And I think AI is a sweet spot for India. So can we build some of those accelerator IPs? Can we build some of those, those things mm -hmm. which can become a part of some of the products that are being uh, uh, built by the rest of the ecosystem globally? I think that's the second step, I would say. I mean, second category. Um, so if we do that, we we can become a meaningful player uh, in that segment. Uh, I mean, I think ranking and all, it just depends like, you know, uh, how we look at that. So before I go to the last question, there is one question, uh, Madhu, which you, uh, I'm giving it to you from Priyank. How do the panelists feel about the latest safety and security regulations in terms or opportunities for India? Uh, safety critical system actually represents a huge opportunity for India. Uh, partly because uh, if you look at all, see what has happened in computing systems in general is we just focus on performance and features. I, I frankly feel uh, the next decade is when we should be focusing on stability and stuff because semiconductors are improving to our day to day life, right? Medical cars and all of that. So the kind of laissez faire attitude we had towards certification, safety, security cannot continue any longer because it's intruded too much into our lives. So if you want to build safety critical systems, which is where uh, Incor is also looking at, uh, a lot of it is uh, mathematical theorem proving, formulations, processes and stuff, mm -hmm. which we are very well geared to do. And there are actually research institutes in the country like Chennai Mathematical Institute. We have expertise in that area. So safety critical systems in general, aerospace, automotive, medical, uh, okay. we can become a market leader. You've got to remember one thing, like what we are doing at risc five. If you play by the rules that has been set in the market, you will forever lag. What we need to do in terms of IP, in terms of pricing, in terms of business model is to upset status quo 
change the market dynamics as i say my job is to make sure my competitors uh, don't make money right i want to reduce their revenue first and then i'll figure out how to make revenue up because so if you play catch up yeah yes thanks Go ahead. so the last question is which is only multiple choice you, there is okay. no larger answer on that one okay so government is focusing on electronics manufacturing we just read it a couple of days back they are trying to get 300 billion revenue by 2026 so my fundamental question is by 2030 will the electronics trade deficit from import versus export will remain the same will increase or will reduce in absolute terms trade deficit between export and imports by 2030 for india will remain the same will increase or will reduce in absolute terms madhu it will actually increase because if you look at the deficit you have to look at terms of because you're talking uh, dollar numbers right yeah uh, intel level processors mobile chips uh, lcd panels uh, uh, the and memory chips these are the big ticket items right so it will increase yeah because you're going to consume more of that so even if you start doing more we may actually end up designing and quasi manufacturing chips more but in terms of value uh, by 2030 that might not help yeah. Richard, what is your take it will shrink same or in, or increase increase and i would jump up and down if in, if we can maintain it the same okay okay and ajay uh, I, I think it will absolutely reduce with the amount of make in India we are doing. I think uh, we just did, discussed in the beginning of the call, right? Some of these ingredients cost much less than the actual product. If we start making the products here, our imports can significantly go down. But we have to hit kind of, you know, the, the things that we have said uh, around manufacturing the products, the systems, the infrastructure stuff. Uh, I think it will reduce. Okay. So thank you, everyone, because this is a Y2K okay moment. So I got the three different answers from reduce, more or less same or increase. And that is how it happens also. And uh, thanks, Madhu. Thanks, Ajay. And thanks, Richard, for a very insightful discussion on the semiconductor because we wanted to focus on semiconductor. And thanks, all audience, for your uh, you know inputs and comments on that one. So, it was a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes.